We're reading this morning just from John, verse 21, chapter 21, verses 15 through 19. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and used to go wherever you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone <clears throat> will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not want to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, be with us this day as we hear your word. And give us the courage to put your word into practice. Now and always. Amen. There was a pastor who had taken a newly ordained minister under his wing to teach him what ministry was all about. It was a good relationship. The young minister was eager to learn, and the seasoned pastor viewed this task as a way to show Christian love to a colleague in ministry. Recently, the pastor had taken a week off of work for vacation. In his absence, his young associate ran the church and on Sunday preached the sermon. On Monday morning, the pastor was speaking with one of his elders, and he asked this lady, uh, how did Reverend Smith do in the pulpit? The elder responded by saying, I'm very sorry to have to tell you, but it was awful. No depth, no insight, no inspiration. There was nothing in it at all. Well, later in the day, the pastor called the associate into his office and said, how did it go Sunday? Was was your sermon well received? And the young man said Sunday was excellent. The only problem was I was so busy during the week with the church business, I didn't have time to prepare a sermon, so I preached one of yours. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that one hits too close to home here or not. <laughs> and there I said it. <laughs> church, don't you just love it? <laughs> and, and actually, I do love it, and it's a good thing that I love it, and we love it, because today's sermon is all about love and how we show God's love to the world. Last Sunday was Easter, and if you were here, you got to be part of that joyous and hopeful celebration of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Easter is a glorious day. Because it's not the end of our joy and commitment to our Lord, it is the beginning. The Gospels do not finish with the resurrection of Jesus. They continue with Jesus teaching and appearing to people and to his disciples. The Easter message, the Gospel story, conveys to us many things. God is about grace and forgiveness and mercy and faith and hope. We know that Jesus' ministries and the events of Easter morning have all of these attributes in abundance. We also know that the one trait that cements the others, the focal point, the one gift from God that holds all the rest together is love. It is God's love that created the universe and everything in it. It is God's love that created a paradise in which to live. It is God's love that rescued the people of Israel and gave commandments to follow and a promised land to live in. God's love sent us prophets to believe in God's words and to receive God's promise. God's love sent his only son to live among us, teaching, guiding, and accepting us as children of God. It is God's love that gave to us his only son, that whoever believed in him should not perish, 
but have life eternal. Love is the very essence of God. Love is why God created us. And God's love sees in us the potential of what we can become. Now in our scripture for today, Jesus covers the essence of love in his conversation with Peter. So let's set up the scene. Seven of the disciples were along the Sea of Tiberias when Peter decided to go fishing. The others joined him and after spending all night fishing, they, they caught nothing. Someone on the shore yelled to them and asked them if they had caught any fish. And when they answered no, they were directed to place their net on the other side of the boat, at which point the net became full of fish. One of the disciples said, that was Jesus. And this prompted Peter to jump from the boat and to run to the shore to meet him. Jesus was cooking breakfast and he invited the disciples to bring over their fish and to join him. After breakfast, Jesus looks at Peter and says, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? It is in this question that Jesus asked, and Peter answered three times, that is at the crux of today's message. When Jesus said, do you love me more than these? He was saying to Peter, Peter, look around you. Look at the fishing boats and the nets and the equipment and your friends and and, and your fishing business that is your livelihood, do you love me more than all of this? In other words, are you willing to sacrifice all of it forever in order to love my people and do my work? Also that when Jesus said, do you love me more than these? He could have been referring to the other disciples because Jesus was no doubt remembering or reminding when Peter said, Though all become deserters because of you, Lord, I will never desert you. We all know how that turned out. So when Jesus says, do you love me more than ye?" He is gently reminding Peter of what happened the last time they had a similar conversation and how he didn't have the courage then to stand up for what was right. But notice, Peter doesn't go into any long discords or comparisons this time. He simply says, Lord, you know I love you. In this passage of Scripture, we see a different Peter, a man who now had the strength and the passion to proudly and boldly say, yes, I love you. And at some point in our lives, I believe we will have to give an answer to that same question. Jesus will say, do you love me more than these? Meaning, are we willing to give up what is holding us back, embrace Jesus as our living Lord, and serve him wholeheartedly? It doesn't mean that we're supposed to walk away from all our possessions and our livelihood and our careers. We're not supposed to, he doesn't call us to scour the earth, preaching and teaching and healing demons from us. But it does mean that Christ needs to come first in life. We need to rely on Christ and not on our own merits. We need to believe in God and in the words of Scripture. We need to believe in the power of prayer. We need to have a faith that is constantly growing and evolving. We need to understand that our fears and our frustrations cannot rule the day. We need to know that our worries about tomorrow can be replaced with complete trust in Christ. In his daily Bible study, Barclay says that when Jesus asked Peter three times if he loved him, he was giving Peter three things. First, Jesus' love brought Peter forgiveness. The words in the Greek that are used in this passage to describe love is the word agape, which is the kind of love that God has for us, and the word philia, which is the love that we have for one another. It was important for Jesus to know that Peter was ready to make a commitment to love both God and his fellow human beings. Three times Jesus asked Peter if he loved him, and three times Peter said yes. Lord, I love you. It was three times that Peter denied Jesus. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. It's as if Jesus was saying, okay, that wipes out the first time that you deny me. 
Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know that I do. Right? That blots out number two. Peter, do you love me? Again, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. And that takes care of number three. Jesus, in his gracious forgiveness, gave Peter the opportunity to wipe out that memory of a threefold denial with a threefold declaration of love. This passage tells us that Jesus' forgiveness is absolute. When God forgives us, that slate is wiped clean, we can go forward as if that sin we committed never happened. Forgiven, forgotten, forever. Second thing that we learn here today is, is the love that Jesus was talking to with Peter brought Peter a mission. Jesus told him, if you love me, then dedicate your life to feeding my sheep. We, as difficult as it may be, need to love each other in a way that God loves us. There is a poem that I found online from Sermon Illustrations. It, it doesn't have an author to it, but that's where you can find it if you want to. If you want to check, check up on me, you're welcome. Uh, the, the poem is entitled, What is Love? It is silence when your words would hurt. It is patience when your neighbors curt. It is deafness when a scandal flows. It is thoughtfulness for others' woes. It is promptness when stern duty calls. It is courage when misfortune falls. Peter made that kind of commitment to Jesus by showing his love as the shepherd of Jesus' flock. From that day forward, we see that Peter took that responsibility seriously and he performed his duties well. And he never again wavered in his courage and commitment. The best way we can show that we love Christ is by loving others. Love is the greatest privilege in the world and with it comes the greatest responsibility. Now, the third thing that love brought Peter was a cross. Jesus knew better than anyone the cost of loving him. And the day came when Peter did die on a cross for his Lord. He even asked to be nailed to it with his head facing downward and his feet facing upward, for he believed he was not worthy to die in the same way of his master. We each have a cross to bear for Christ, and each of us is given the privilege of serving God with our lives. Peter proved that he was up to the task of serving Christ with his life, and so are all of us. It's actually not all that hard. Here's the recipe. Christ comes first. Rely totally on Christ. Believe in Scripture. Believe in the power of prayer. Love one another and feed Christ sheep. We can do that. There was a, there's a story about two friends, Jack and Jim. Let's hope I can keep it straight. And they were inseparable. Everybody knew that. Everybody who knew Jack and Jim knew that if you saw Jim, you saw Jack. And they were the best of friends. Jim was very, he, he had a very skilled job. He worked for the railroad. This story obviously took place a long time ago when railroads were prevalent and, and pertinent to our lives. And he worked for the railroad and he was very skilled. He, he could do many, many jobs, signalman and operator and different things for the railroad and he was a very valuable commodity to them. Jack just, at this point in his life, just kind of hung around Jim. That was the way it worked. And one day, while on the railroad, Jim got in a terrible accident, and he lost both of his legs. And once he knew he was going to recover, and once he knew he was going to live, and once he knew and dealt with the fact that he now had to live with a person with no legs, his biggest fear in front of him was, how was he going to survive? How was he going to make a living? Now, the railroad wasn't going to keep him uh, with doing all the skills he had when he had no legs. And he didn't know what he was going to do. But to his surprise, the railroad did keep him. And they said, we will keep you on. And we're going to put you in a remote outpost out in the middle of nowhere. We'll give you a little cottage to live in. And you operate the signals and do your job from there. And it was also decided that, at least in the beginning, to help get him on the, his feet, Jack would go with them and help take care of them. 
And so they moved to the cottage. And at, at first, Jack did the little things. You know, he tended the garden, swept up the cottage, uh, prepared a meal here and there, and, and got Jim down the steep path every day to work the signals and to make sure that the intricate workings of the railroad worked well so that no trains crashed and no problems arose. And the more Jack stayed around Jim, the more Jack did to help Jim. He started cooking all the meals. He started waiting on him hand and foot. He started, he continued to tend to the garden. Uh, he, before too long, Jack was doing all of the chores. And as he was used to going every day down to work the railway systems to take Jim there, he noticed that after a while, even though he wasn't trained or certified, he could do that job. He sat and watched every day, so he started doing that job, even though he wasn't qualified, even though he wasn't trained. And he did the job very well. There was never an incident. There was never an accident. Everything was great. And the longer they stayed together in that cabin, the more Jack did and the less Jim did, and Jack took care of him. Never got paid. All the checks came to Jim. But Jack did everything selflessly and full of love because he loved his friend, Jim. Now, this story is a rest of the story. This is my old friend, Paul Harvey. Um, and this story doesn't end there. It's a wonderful story because it shows the depths of love we can go to each other. But the rest of the story is that Jack was a butler. Jack was a maid. Jack was a gardener. Jack was a signal operator. Here it comes. Jack was a baboon. And I mean the big monkey. That I actually mean a baboon. Not a, not a clown. Not a buffoon. I actually mean a baboon. And that is the rest of the story, if you choose to believe what Paul Harvey tells us. For nine years until the, I'll say monkey to make it simpler, died of polio, he did everything to take care of his friend in that remote cottage and never once caused an incident or any type of harm. That is a great story about the power of love. And the power of love is so amazing to us in our life because God gives it freely and simply asks us to love each other the same way in return. It says it in the book of 1 John, see what love God the Father has for us that we shall be called children of God. And so we are. So let us go out and serve him. Let us pray. Gracious God, help us to move and live and have our being through you. Help us to realize and appreciate the gift of love. And may we use that gift in our lives now and always. Amen.